We looked at Clonezilla in previous videos. This time I'll show you how to clone an image of PC or hard drive with RescueZilla. This program is similar to Clonezilla but with much friendlier user interface and it's fully compatible with Clonezilla disk images. RescueZilla not only lets you clone in image drives but it also comes with utilities such as a web browser, Firefox, for quick browsing in Gparted, a disk management software that allows you to format and partition hard drives. Just as a brief summary about disk imaging, disk imaging is a type of backup where not just your personal files are backed up, but the entire operating system, your programs, and all of your settings. Everything is then turned into a single file or folder known as a disk image. You can then use this disk image to restore your PC in case your current hard drive dies, or you plan to upgrade the drive and don't want to have to reinstall Windows from scratch. To get started with RescueZilla, we'll need to first go ahead and download the disk image. So we'll hit this download link here. Select the latest version, live image. Once downloaded, go ahead and open up Rufus. Under device, select your USB flash drive. And where it says select, choose the RescueZilla image that you downloaded and hit start. This will erase everything on the USB flash drive. Download is required. We'll say yes on that. Hit OK. Once complete, go ahead and take out the USB drive, put it in the computer that you want to clone or image, and boot from USB. You can do this by pressing F2, F7, the delete key, F8, or F12. You may need to look up how to enter your boot menu. All right, so I'm in my boot menu. I'll select the PNY. And here we are at RescueZilla. We'll select our language. Start RescueZilla. And I am using my recently purchased B-Link mini PC. And RescueZilla will boot up. Give it a little time. It immediately goes into the RescueZilla interface. It's already detected our Wi-Fi, which is pretty good. So we see here we have options for backup and restore. This is for actually creating images and restoring images. And then right here under clone, this is where we can replicate our disk to another disk. But I just want to get out of here and show you that this is an entire operating system. I believe it's Debian based and we have a file manager so we can browse files on any connected devices. They'll show up here. We got Firefox. This is really useful for doing some quick research before you begin cloning or modifying disks. We've got a terminal, Gparted, which can't be opened while you also have this window open. So let's close this. And Gparted, which allows you to format and partition disks, which we will look at later. Text editor, and of course, with Mozilla itself. The first thing I would do is show you how to clone a disk, and then we'll be looking at creating images and restoring images. And I'll also show you how to expand your partitions in case you migrate from a smaller disk to a larger disk. We'll start by making a clone. We come down here where it says clone and click that. This gives you a brief description of what cloning actually means. We're going to be copying everything from one disk directly onto another disk, erasing everything on that new disk. We'll go to next and we'll select our source. My source is going to be this 256 Crucial SSD, which has my web server stuff on it. So I'll select that. And for the destination, I'm going to be cloning to a one terabyte Crucial drive. Keep in mind that everything on the destination drive will be erased. You can see the partitions listed here as well. So we'll go to next. We can select the partitions. I don't know why it's in this little tiny window here, but I think that's just my display capture right now. We'll check overwrite partition table. Hit next. Gives you a summary. This is our destination drive, which is correct. And we're going to be copying all of these partitions to the destination drive. Now, again, this doesn't necessarily have to be a drive containing Windows or Linux. This can be any hard drive that you want to clone. So then I'll go to next. That's going to say for sure. I would say yes. We scroll down here so we can get a better indi indication of what's going on. Right here, it's asking us what we want to do when the task is complete. 
can say shut down, reboot the system. I'll just say do nothing. And you just have to sit back and wait as RescueZilla go ahead and clones your disk. Depending on the size of your source disk and the speed of the device, this could take quite a bit of time. So I'll come back when this is done. It does just give you a summary such as estimated time and completion status as it chugs along. So I'll come back when this is done. All right, RescueZilla is finishing up the disk cloning. This gives us a summary. Everything looks successful. So I'll go to next. And we're, that's it. We're back at the uh, main screen here. If I open up Gparted and just look at that disk, you see here that all the partitions were copied from that 256 SSD to my one terabyte SSD. Of course, we have all this extra space, which I'll show you how to expand later when we look at booting up from our restore. Let's look at creating images next. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is use Gparted to completely erase all these partitions. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete them all. And then just create a new file system here. We'll make it NTFS. And we'll hit add. And then we'll hit this check mark to apply changes. And once that's done, and now we have a new blank drive to work with. Let's go ahead and close this and create our image. Open up RescueZilla icon again. And so we'll go to backup. Now, when creating an image, this is the thing that I like about images. Basically, it's going to create a folder with a bunch of files in it that contains information about file system, the partitions, and all of your data. The best part about images is that you can very easily and quickly restore them to multiple drives, and you can use them as a form of backup in case disaster strikes. So what we'll do here is select our source drive. Again, I'm going to be creating an image now of my web server, this 256 crucial drive. We're going to select all of the partitions. Next, we need to select a destination where we want to store this image. This time, I'm actually going to store the image on the one terabyte drive. We go to next. Here we can select the destination folder. I'll say backup folder is fine, so we'll hit next. We can give the image a name. I'll just stick with the defaults so and makes it easier since it has the date. You can even add a little description for the image to better identify it. I'll just skip that and go to next. Here we can select the type of compression that we want. GZIP is fine. It's the default. And I want the best compression. This is going to take a lot more resources and be slower. Hit next. Gives us a summary to source drive the destination for the image. And this is going to turn all these partitions into a single folder about that drive. You can choose to ignore inconsistencies and bad sectors as well. I don't recommend that. I'm just going to leave that unchecked and hit next. And it will start the process of creating this image. So again, we're going to let this take place. And when it's complete, we'll go ahead and do a restore, I'm going to restore this image on a four terabyte SSD, and then we will boot it up. All right, so the image is complete. Let's go to next. We're back at the main screen here. We go to file manager and look at our one terabyte drive. We can see a folder with the RescueZilla image, and this contains all the little files that represent our disk image. Do not touch anything in this folder, else you risk destroying the image. Now let's go ahead and restore this image to my four terabyte drive. So I'll attach that drive to the B-Link PC here. And in File Manager, I should see it pop up here. My four terabyte Evo, okay, that's fine. 
we'll go back to RescueZilla and we'll do a restore. We need to find our image. It's stored on our one terabyte drive. So I'll select that. It's located our image. That's the image that we want. So we'll select that, hit next. Now, where do we want to restore to? This is very important. You want to be very careful what you choose on this list. Again, like when cloning, the disk that you select, everything will be erased on that disk. I'm going to choose my four terabyte Samsung Evo. Select our partitions. I'm going to select everything and hit next. Again, the summary, our image, the destination drive, and all the partitions that will be copied to that drive. Hit next. Are you sure? Yes. And we are going to restore that image to a higher capacity, newer Samsung SSD. So let's let this run and we'll come back. All right, the restore is complete. It gives us a summary of what happened, how long it took. We'll hit next and we're back where we started. So let's go ahead and boot up this disk and see if everything was successful. All right, we can see the four terabyte Samsung with the Windows Boot Manager. And it looks like everything is successful. Let's go in here. I got my little web server set up. Let's go into my computer and see that space. Now we see here it says 237, which was the 256 disk. But if we go to computer management, and see what we have here. We'll notice that we've got a ton of space unallocated. Now the problem is, it's all the way over here in between this recovery partition. And I don't think in Windows you can move these partitions around. So what we need to do is move this partition over here so we add this unallocated space into our Windows partition. We can do this with Gparted that comes with RescueZilla. Let's go ahead and boot back up into RescueZilla and do that. So back in RescueZilla, let's go ahead and adjust our partitions. So we'll open up Gparted. And it's already on our four terabyte drive. So this little partition, we want to move that over here and move this unallocated with our windows. We'll right click and say resize move. And we'll take all this free space after it and put it in the free space before it. Now this message is important. Do not move the boot partitions on a Linux or Windows system. Doing so might cause the system not to boot at all. We're not moving the boot partition in this instance, so we're fine. So what we'll do is go here and select our Windows partition. Select a little arrow. And we'll just drag this scroll all the way to the end so that we have all this free white space here and hit resize. We apply changes. Operation is complete. Now in Windows, we should have our full space. Let's go ahead and restart. Back up into Windows. Booting back up. Now if you see this check disk, you want to go ahead with that. I'm going to skip it to show you how to do it manually because sometimes that does not pop up. And you need to do this to ensure that the disk is properly set up after you use Gparted. So I'm going to open up and see that indeed all my space has been occupied. I have the full four terabyte. Now sometimes this isn't always the case. And in Windows, the partitions will not look like anything has been changed after you use Gparted. What you want to do is open the terminal as an administrator. and run check disk. Minus F. You're going to get this message saying that Windows can't check the disk because the drive is currently locked. And if you would like to check the disk when you restart your PC, we'll say yes on that. 
And then what you want to do is restart the PC and then it should run that check disk that you saw at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and reboot the system. And now you will see that check disk again. And you want to do this if you use Gparted to expand the disk, but Windows doesn't recognize it, then you want to run that check disk command. But you definitely want Windows to check the disk after you modify the partitions. And here we are. Again, back at our freshly cloned hard drive with much more space than we originally had before, thanks to RescueZilla. Now, not only do we have a larger disk, but we have all of our programs, all of our files, all of our settings. We didn't have to reinstall Windows from scratch and install every single individual program and copy our files. RescueZilla did it all for us. Disk images with CloneZilla and RescueZilla are nice, but you can't easily browse the files to, for example, maybe restore a single file or folder from that image. In order to recover data from these images, you have to actually restore the entire image to a drive. In the next video, I'll show you how to browse CloneZilla and RescueZilla-based images in Windows.